All right, we've got the generator running. I'm heating up the oil to do an oil change. I picked up a bunch of brass adapters. I know brass, not bronze, but it's on the generator. It's the oil drain plug. I adapted it to the same fitting size as the main engine, which is 3 8 inch flare. 3 8 flare is the oil extractor drain plug on the main engine. That way I can use the same extractor pump to pull oil out of the gen set. Um, I'll show you the I'll show you the connector in a minute. It's kind of a monstrosity. I think it's too much metal hanging off of a copper tube with the engine vibration. Great, that's all gonna fatigue and leak or break. But uh, short term or maybe long term, we'll see how it goes. Uh, at least that'll make my oil changes easy. This is our waste oil container. All right, so here's my new adapters right here. I'll let you get over there. Here's my new adapters. I also put on a cap. Oil's warm. You can see I got a valve here. I had the mechanic when I had this motor rebuilt, engine rebuilt. I had the mechanic put this drain assembly on because where the oil plug was relative to the engine frame, all you could do is let it, all the oil spill into the pan and then mop it up. It was awful. So this setup, now that I got all the right pieces and adapters, should make it a lot easier. So I have this hose with a little pump, covered in oil, where's my rag? Screw this on. Remember how you originally did it? You spilled half the oil in the. I spilled bilge. all the oil. Well, it went in the pan, not the. Bilge. No, for the main engine. I don't remember that. You're talking about when we had the diesel fuel leak, the or, red diesel. No, I remember when we first started doing oil changes. I don't like, remember spilling a lot of oil. Yeah. Maybe from the filter. All right, so that's gonna go in the bucket. That's not gonna tip over. Get some of this oil off my hand. I open this what valve. Gonna be. Black. Ooh, the way that valve's oriented, I can't open it all the way. This. Yeah. Oh, there it is. See it? Yep. Beautiful. I didn't have to go that fast. I'm gonna take the cap off. So let's get a vent. Oh, beautiful. Do you think you're going to fill up that entire jug? No. I think it's like a quart. It doesn't hold a whole lot. Why can't we have the engine oil and the generator oil connected to the same system? You could. They make these um, permanently installed oil change systems. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, if we were cruising full time, maybe. Uh. Yep, still draining. So check this out. This is the generator oil pressure gauge. I broke the glass when I was removing it. This thing stopped working. It's been a while. I don't know if it's been two seasons. I actually replaced the original. I wasn't sure why the original gauge stopped working. Put the new one in, worked for a little while, then it stopped. So I've um, just bypassed the emergency cutoff, low oil pressure cutoff, and have ignored it, other than monitoring the engine a little more diligently. Well, it, in removing this gauge today, I discovered that the, the housing on the generator from all the vibration has actually cut through the gauge and damaged the needle. See how that, that slice is from vibration. I chewed it up a bit trying to pry it out, but that's all my handiwork with a screwdriver. But the slice, that is from the vibration of the unit. That cover has been a problem since I bought the boat. All the screw holes have, the metal has fatigued and broken through, so I actually hold it on with a bungee. 
But what it really needs is a nice, thick, rubber piece of trim to keep this thing from vibrating and resonating. And it makes a racket. It's actually the noisiest part of the gen set. I'd love to replace this with something better. Really, this control port needs to be isolated from the engine alternator setup. Um, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do there. I have a new gauge, but if I install it in that same slot, the same thing is just going to happen again. And actually, the same has occurred to the temp gauge. Yeah, the temp gauge is damaged. I ordered one. It's coming. I, got, I found one on eBay. It was an open box. $35. I think it's like $70 for... New? Brand, brand new. Oh, yeah. I can see what's prob problem yep. with it. Yeah, so the without that rubber hose on there, see yeah. that green garden hose? Yeah. The casting of this housing yeah. was slicing into the gauges. Yeah, it looks like And all like the screw like, holes had broken off like, before like I bought the boat. And I'm hoping that ratchet strap I put on there now, that orange strap, is t a tighter fit than the bungee, like the bungee cord that was on there before. That was another uh, previous owner. What's this green thing. stuff? Green stuff. I can't see over there. Cause and there's um, white bayonet. That is coolant. That is the overflow tank. For this is your coolant tank right here on top mm -hmm. of the engine. And so basically when you fill it up, it's cold, right? You put mm -hmm. cold coolant in. And then as the engine gets up to operating temp, it, the fluid expands. Mm -hmm. So it goes out through this little breather hose and into that overflow tank as opposed to spilling all over the ground or the bilge mm -hmm. rather isn't that what like um and uh, i forgot what it's called these that your elbows on instead yeah, what's that the cool yeah heat exchangers yeah so that coolant exchanger. is running through this one's oil mm -hmm. engine oil sorry that one's actually transmission oil this bigger one is coolant and salt water, yeah. raw water. Is there one on here? Yeah, the heat exchanger on this one is actually in that tank. Have There's you coils needed to there. repair it? No. Have you repaired this one? Uh, no, we've never replaced this one. I should, uh, I should have it serviced, or just re I'll probably just replace it. I think it's like six hundred dollars. Wow. It's not inexpensive. Dog hair, man. So much dog hair. Yeah, I see some over here too. I gotta just like every couple months wipe everything down in here. I've been neglecting it. Alright, and then this goes back in that oily bag. I have this oil for my old motorcycles, this like oil fill funnel with a tube. I'm gonna keep that on the boat. For next time. Great idea. All right, I got the safety wires reconnected for oil pressure, low oil pressure. That's what this push button's for. Actually, when you're starting the engine before you have oil pressure, the way the system's designed is you have to hold this cutout switch until the engine turns over. I had that bypass since the gauge was bad, so I've reconnected it. So when I turn the key on here, I can hear the click. It's working, and if I crank without holding the button down, because there's low oil pressure, the engine won't start. And then you can see here, hmm, do this single-handed. Um, if I hold the button in and turn the key, the engine will turn over. So next, I need to order a new Murphy gauge for water temp to replace the damaged one that's on the unit. I'll work on that, and we'll cover that in a future video.